I have two brief questions I'd like to ask, if I may. Media. My name is Brendan Malone and you're watching The Daily Question. Today's question of the day, is Michael Peterson guilty? Now the reason I'm asking that question is because I've just finished watching the new Netflix series The Staircase, which is a true crime documentary series. Now just a point of clarification, this isn't actually a new series and it isn't actually a Netflix series. Originally this series was made years ago, I watched the original 10-parter several years ago. Uh, and then it, it's now appeared on Netflix along with uh, three brand new episodes which follow uh, Michael Peterson in his subsequent uh, retrial process um, and, and, and sort of the final outcome of all of that. Uh, it's an interesting series, it's a true crime series, uh, basically based on the story of Michael and Kathleen Peterson. Kathleen is the victim in this situation, uh, December the 9th, 2001. Uh, the early hours of the morning uh, in California, the, the 911 operators get a phone call uh, from Michael Peterson saying that his wife uh, is, is at the bottom of the staircase, she's fallen down the stairs in their home and, uh, and she's had an accident and, and they need to come quickly. And they arrive and pretty quickly the police come to the determination that in actual fact there wasn't an accident, that this was a case of homicide, and then Michael Peterson is put on trial. And during the original 10-part series, which follows the, 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 the uh, original trial, we find out um, some interesting things about Michael Peterson. We hear a little bit of the evidence, not all of it, but we hear a bit of the evidence. We discover that he actually was a, a closeted bisexual who was in or having an affair with a man. Uh, he claimed his wife knew about it, but other people close to the family were saying that she didn't know about it. Uh, we discover that he'd lied about his uh, his military service and, and what medals he had. He didn't actually have certain medals that he claimed to have had. Uh, he was a, 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 an author of military fiction. Um, he also was someone who, in, in just this absolute bizarre moment in the original series, was involved in or very close to another case of a woman who fell down the stairs and originally this happened when they were overseas in Europe and he was the last person to be seen with this woman alive. She was a good friend of theirs and then she is found dead at the bottom of the stairs. It was originally deemed an accident but her body was exhumed as part of his original trial and when they examined the body they came to the conclusion that in actual fact it wasn't an accident the first time around that uh, this was a homicide. Uh, and so this whole case takes these bizarre twists and turns. He's found guilty and then the, the new, uh, th brand new three episodes that follow on from that, they pick up uh, the case from the point where there is uh, an appeal process going on where he is challenging the verdict because of the fact that a couple of the key experts who are involved, the forensic experts involved in this case, uh, actually had been found to have been experts who engaged in uh, very unethical uh, violations of natural justice in other court cases. And so subsequently, uh, he's able to win himself a retrial which then turns into uh, what they call an Alfred guilty plea, which is where you plead guilty, but you say, I'm pleading guilty because I think a jury would find me guilty, but I don't believe that I'm guilty. I believe I'm innocent. So after watching The Staircase, what do I think? Well, there are things about the series that frustrate me. One of the first things that I found a little bit frustrating was uh, the director, uh, Jean-Xavier Delestrade, who's a, who's a French director, uh, at a Tribeca Film Festival earlier this year, he was asked about the case, and, th and this is what he said to the audience, that uh, determining Peterson's innocence or guilt was never part of his grand plan in making the film or the documentary series. The purpose was never, or has never been to look for the truth, or to look for what happened that night. It was just to look at the way the justice system would treat the case. And then he goes on to say this, but to me, there is no strong evidence presented that Michael Peterson killed his wife. That's where I stand. So in other words, he believes in Michael Peterson's innocence. Now, that's not surprising to me at all, because despite what he's claimed here, and this is something I found a little bit disappointing, this isn't really just an examination of the judicial proceedings at all. It very clearly is an advocacy piece. It is very clearly trying to advocate on behalf of Michael Peterson, and it's very clearly trying to suggest to us that he's totally innocent 
of these crimes, that this has all been a mistake or a stitch up. And so I, th I was frustrated when I read those comments because I thought, you know, that's a little bit dishonest because really this is an advocacy piece. Second thing that I found a little bit frustrating and I guess disappointing was I discovered reading some articles after uh, watching the series that the editor, the female editor on this documentary series had actually fallen in love with Michael and they had been in a serious romantic relationship for many years and that ha that culminated, I think that came to an end in 2017. So that's quite far into this process. And the director came out and he said, oh, no, 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 look, look, you know, she was professional the whole time. She maintained her professionalism. But for me, being an editor on a documentary series where you're actively involved in the editorial decisions around how the subject, in this case, Michael Peterson, is being presented and being in a serious romantic relationship with that person, there's just no way that you cannot be compromised. Anyone who's ever been in a long-term romantic relationship or a serious romantic relationship can tell you that of course you're going to be compromised because you have very strong feelings about this person and those feelings can't help but make themselves felt when you're doing your job if your job is to present the subject in a particular way. Another thing I found really frustrating about the series was that they didn't examine the owl theory in any great detail. Now the owl theory is a subsequent theory that has, has arisen uh, since the first trial and the owl theory postulates this idea that uh, Kathleen Peterson was actually attacked by an owl in the early hours of the morning and suffered some serious lacerations and then she went inside the house, she was bleeding quite badly and the loss of blood caused her to fall and stumble down the stairs and hit her head and that's why it looked like a homicide. It actually was an owl and a, and, and a, and a fall down the stairs and, and, and Michael Peterson is, is totally innocent. It just looked like a homicide because of that fact. Now this, I read about this theory and it's an interesting theory and there is some definitely some compelling evidence around this theory but they never present it in these new uh, brand new updated uh, three extra episodes that have been added to the series. Now I found that really strange because to me this was a no-brainer. This should have been in those uh, updated episodes because it is a subsequent piece of evidence. It's a compelling piece of evidence. There's some experts who have put their name to it. It's not just people on some dirt, dark sort of dirty corner of the internet sort of speculating. This is actually something substantial and it gained a lot of public traction as well or, or certainly a lot of public awareness about it and it was like why is this not actually in the series? It seems to me that it should be there. Now part of me wondered if the reason it's not there is because the owl theory is not actually as strong as some people would like to think that it is. I, I wondered to myself if in actual fact she had suffered such serious lacerations that had been caused by an owl while she was outside and she'd stumbled inside, there'd probably be more blood, wouldn't there? If it was the sort of blood loss was at that level, not just little droplets, but a, a substantial amount of blood. And perhaps there's no real forensic evidence outside of that staircase to sort of back up the theory. And, and on top of that, um, Michael Peterson's whole claim was this whole time that he was outside by the pool, he had no awareness of what happened, and it's only when he goes inside that he actually finds his wife at the bottom of the staircase. And so I think that would challenge that theory because if you think about it, if she was attacked by an owl outside of her home, uh, and, and an owl attack would be a very vicious thing, she'd be screaming out, and very loudly probably. So he would have probably heard that or, or, or should have at least known that something was up before he discovered her on the staircase. And I wonder if, because this documentary has become so much of an advocacy piece, they felt that it was better just to leave that out altogether. It's frustrating though because I think it is an important piece of evidence and I think it does really go right to the heart of the key question, is he guilty or is he innocent? So the million dollar question is, do I think he's guilty or do I think he's innocent after watching this series? Well, to be honest with you, I can't really say for certain. Um, one thing I do know is that I have an assumption about his uh, guilt or innocence and, and based on the evidence and applying Occam's razor, my assumption is that he is guilty of, of murdering his wife. But I can't say that with any certainty and this is why things like that owl theory it was really frustrating that they weren't included because I think that's sort of important information that is in the public interest. If you're going to go to the lengths of making a documentary about a murder trial like this, it would seem that it is in the public interest actually to put something like that on the table to give a, a bit more perspective and help us to, to begin to gauge and, and form a, a reliable opinion 
uh, which about the whole matter which lies at the heart of this, which is, is he guilty or is he innocent? So I think if you apply Occam's razor, when you look at it, he had means, motive and opportunity. And if it's a homicide, then he is the most probable candidate to have actually carried out that homicide. However, at the same time, there's also no doubt that he was also the victim of a miscarriage of justice. In his first trial, these three new episodes show quite clearly that he was the victim of some overzealous law enforcement officials who, instead of acting in a way that was consistent with natural justice, these vitally important principles of natural justice, in order to, uh, to sort of ensure that he had a fair trial, they became zealous in their desire to convict him of this crime. They had preordained conclusions in mind, and as a result, he was not treated fairly in his first trial. And that's a problem. Now here's the thing, a person can be guilty and also be the victim of a miscarriage of justice. And for some people I know, they think those two things can't exist together, but in actual fact, that's a false dichotomy, they can. You can be guilty of a crime, and then also subsequently suffer a miscarriage of justice when the people who are charged with handling your case don't give you a fair trial. And so for me, my assumption is that he's guilty, but there's no doubt that he was also the victim of a miscarriage of justice, and I have no problem with those two things existing side by side, because that can happen. The thing for me though, as I said, that was a little bit frustrating, is I'd like to know more about the actual evidence, and that's one thing I felt the series is lacking, is it's a very one-sided presentation of the evidence, I would like to hear more. And I just feel that this case wasn't really an examination of the judicial process, and this is why the, the comments from the director were, I think, were disappointing for me, because it really is about advocacy, and they very much slant and present everything in one direction. Ultimately, for me, I guess the biggest frustration of all I have about this series, this is a almost 13 hours, which spans many years of this man's life, and probably at a point where he, one of the most vulnerable points in his life, and despite all of that, you feel at the end of the series that you don't really know who Michael Peterson truly is. I'm a bit of a people watcher and it's fascinating to me to watch Michael Peterson closely in this documentary and there's a lot of things he does in his conversational style and the way he engages with people, even people who are very close to him, he keeps a distance, he keeps a wall up, he's very very guarded and for me it's quite a strange thing to realize that you've watched 13 hours uh, of, of documentary that covers many, many years of a, of a person's life, and you still don't really truly feel like you've actually met or seen the real subject. There are little moments where the dam sort of perhaps cracks a little bit, and some of you know the truth starts to sort of creep out a little bit, but it never really fully breaks. We never really discover the man behind the mask, in my opinion. There's very much a, a, a careful and very guarded presentation to us, and even to those closest to him, uh, of, of who he wants to be. And he sort of tries to maintain a, a sense of strength and control. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of watching him and, and the way he engages in conversation with people. And it's very fascinating, but it's also very, very frustrating, because for me, a documentary like this, the, the heart of it, and what makes a documentary like this so good, is that you actually get to, to really truly know in a more intimate way, not necessarily in the best way possible, but you get to know in a more intimate way about the subject, and I just felt that that really didn't happen. So at the end of the day, I don't know for certain whether he is guilty or innocent. I wasn't there on the night, I didn't see the crime, I didn't hear all of the evidence that was presented in his trial, and neither did you. And unfortunately, I don't think that this documentary series gave us a full and frank disclosure of all of that evidence and all of the, the possible allegations and counter allegations that it could have, and we never really got to meet, I don't think, the real Michael Peterson. The floor is now open, I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you like the content I'm creating and you'd like to see more of it, then please support me on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. That's right, I can hear my theme music too, I'll see you next week on The Daily Question.